queen, naturally beautiful, radiant. She is black essence, and her beautiful natural hair is her crowning glory. What is the first thing that you think of when I say black hair? First thing that I think of when I you say black hair is glory. I remember growing up and my grandmother and my aunt would always say that your hair is your glory. So when I think of black hair, I think of your glory. Not so much as what it, that it defines you, but it is your hair. And it doesn't make you, but you can make the hair and be proud of the type of hair that you have. Matters the grade. How important do you feel is hair in black communities? It's very important. Um, everyone's importance is not the same. You have some who feel that the hair makes them. You have some who feel that the hair brings them out. In some communities, hair is booming. I mean, hair is the way to go. Um, and you have those who are now, are happy just being nappy, as they would say. Do you feel that black hair and the discussion of it is communal and why? I definitely believe that it's communal. There's a discussion of hair. There's a discussion of what type of hair to wear, whether you're getting extensions, whether your hair is natural. Um, so daily there are people wearing styles because they saw someone who had that style and they felt like it was something that would look good on them. Um, the discussion of, oh, what number of hair is that? Or who did your hair? Or what beautician you go to? Or what type of products to wear? So it is communal. And name some of the hair, pro hair care products that you used growing up to now. Ooh, Crown Royal, which a lot of people who or in my age range, understand that that was the burning grease. That's what they would use to press your hair out. Saturday morning, Sunday morning. I'm really ripping, Jean Noble, with that good word about that fine royal crown hairdresser. All the chicks I know really goes for royal crown, and yours truly, little Richard, really goes for the chicks with that royal crown look. Take it and go, horse. Crown Royal was one, Carefree was one. If you wore Jerry Curls, Snapback, Carefree Curl was another one. What is your hair to you? My hair to me is just as my eyes are to see, my mouth is to speak, my hands is to write, and my feet is to walk. It's a part of me. It doesn't make me, but it is a part of me, and I am truly proud of it. How does your hair, how does it have an effect on your day? Oh, my hair, it does, it can affect my day at times. Um, because I'm in a natural state, there are times when it bites me. It, it gets tight, it's hard to comb, or if I wear my natural twist out state, the twist, twist up too hard, or too tight, and it's irritating at times, but you know, I go with it. And many of those stemming from childhood when, you know, we grew up in a poor socioeconomic status, um, five siblings, four, and I'm the fifth. Um, and I had a jerry curl for maybe three years. We were, um, didn't have the funds to buy any hair products. So I continued to add water to a Carefree Curl bottle, even though, of course, the strength was already gone. And so I would just shake it up anyway, add a little lotion to it. And of course, it's a three-year-old jerry curl, so you can imagine what it looked like. So by getting to school, I looked like a waterfall. In the school, it was just dried out in like a desert. So that was one of the worst bad hair days as a childhood. You know, I had kids teasing, saying, oh, this girl have a waterfall on her head by the end of the day. Now she has a desert. So it was like the thing of the day, see what type of hairstyle the little girl had because they didn't know who I was or they didn't know my name. But I didn't worry about that. Would you ever think about perming your hair again? No, but I must admit, walking into Walmart in days when my hair was not as good state where it's not acting right. I walked down the aisles where the perms were and first thing I thought of was my husband's face or my husband, what he would think because he loves my natural state and, and I do love that about him that he loves me in my natural state. Does the term nappy sound familiar to you? Yes. <laughs> Very familiar because as a child, nappy was not good. I think it stems from slavery, and if you don't understand it, then you're going to term it or deem it negative. And that's society for you. I mean, if they don't understand it, it's bad. And there was a certain time where 
straight hair was in. You know, African Americans wanted to look a certain way, or society says if your hair was straight, then you can get a job. It was almost as if society put a label on what your hair is supposed to look like. And now we are more proud of who we are. We are more, and me myself, we're proud of our hair in its natural state. And it's accepted, which lets people know what they should believe, you know, no one should be the same. Everyone should have their own identity when it comes to hair and dress because individual is one thing, but just to have a variety of colors, a variety of hairstyles, a variety of dress, then that just makes the world what it is. If we were all the same, it would be very lame. So, so what does the term good hair mean to you? Good hair is this hair. Good hair is any hair. Good hair, if you, whether you short or have short hair, you're bald headed, you have a tapered cut, you have natural hair, you have a perm, whatever, that is good hair. What you were born with is your good hair. And of course, when that hair falls out, your hair comes out, the hair that you will live with, that is good hair. How do you think these terms can affect the way a child grow, grows up seeing themselves? Oh, that can affect the child tremendously. I mean, it takes a really strong-willed individual or child to be in this society or be in this world and to overcome and to not allow what people think of them. Um, being a fifth grade educator, I see some who are that way and I'm training them. I'm letting them know you be who you are and not allow what other people say define who you are. Um, if there are things that you feel you have to change about yourself, change, but don't make that change because someone else says that what you are and who you are is not acceptable. But yes, society does play a huge part in why you have a high rate of suicide, why you have a high rate of bullying, why you have a high rate of social absence. You know, a lot of um, kids does not know how to socialize and it's because they are very insecure with who they are and in their skin. But if we teach them while they're young, then we can reverse that. Okay, and then... Should the grade of your hair affect the way you as a man or a woman or and children see themselves? No. Um, again, your hair is a part of you. If you are proud of the type of hair you have, if you are happy with the style that you have, then that's enough. That's enough. It doesn't matter what your hair look like. If you are proud, you can wake up and if you feel like not combing your hair, if you can wake up and get up out the bed and you can go outside and go to work and smile although your hair is not combed, then that's when you can say that's good hair and you are proud of your hair. It doesn't make you. That's when you can say it does not make you. Okay, and um, what are some things that you can do today to change the way men, women, young girls and boys see their hair and the way they see themselves in a positive light? You have to understand that matters what you do. At the end of the day, before you go to bed or when it's time to redo your extensions, when you take it out, there is your natural hair. So be proud of what is you because it is your hair, it is with you, it's going to stay with you unless you cut it off. And then when you cut it off, it's going to grow back.